Welcome back to another Epic 7 video. The collab for the Epic 7X Overlord patch preview is finally here. They released all three characters. I haven't looked at any of them yet. I'm going to watch them all with you guys here together. Let's put it all into one video. I can't wait. So I'm actually going to skip through all the kind of basic stuff here. So if you guys want to check it out, you guys know the drill. Check out the uh, patch summary. But there's some exclusive equipments here for Teyu. Interesting. And Arya. Actually, I want to look at Arya's real fast. Effectress is super nice. Damage on S1, damage dealt by Dark Shadow Phantom by 10%, and at the start of the battle gains one focus. Okay, I mean, Effective Resist is really nice. I'm not sure which one I would really use here. Getting one focus just gets us into that five focus a little bit sooner. Um, and the other just 10% damage on the S1, and then the big, you know, crow ultimate. But anyways... Like I said, guys, I want to jump straight into the patch preview. So I'm going to skip over all this stuff here. There's some Arky events. There's a Forge Epic gear. Remember, we all knew about this. And one last thing I want to show you all is the Briar Witch um, art for the skin is here. And honestly, I think it looks really good. I like how she looks there. All right. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into the hero previews. All right, guys. Jumping straight into it. I don't think we could start with anyone else but the main man himself, Mr. Eins. I can't wait. Let's go See the animation. We did see this, I think. I took a little sneak peek in the patch preview. Very cool, though. Alright, then we're going to jump straight into it, right? No background like in the normal preview. So we'll take it over from here. Dark Mage, so he is confirmed to be a free Dark Mage. Five-star unit, okay? Um, confirmed because I believe I saw uh, somewhere stated that we will be able to triple S him for free. I'll confirm it uh, real quickly after the video, but I, I'm pretty sure he's our free character. So get ready, guys. Free ML5 here. Can't wait to see his kit. But he has effect resist, effectiveness, and seems like pretty balanced stats overall considering he's a Taurus. Uh, 115 speed, and both effectiveness, effect resist, and his imprints are both F and F, uh, ER, excuse me. All right, let's go ahead and continue on here and check out the first skill. The goal of all life is death. Dispels all buffs from the enemy before silencing for one turn. Very powerful. And a 70%, which looks like, yep, 30 plus 100 to inflict death sentence. The skill is unaffected by cool, down, increase, and decrease effects. All right, very nice. So any skill pushback, things like that, will not affect this man. And the cooldown is actually um, three, three turn cooldown. Death sentence. At the start of someone's turn, 12th turn, start of summons 12th turn, deals 50,000 fixed damage to the bear, ignores damage sharing effects. Okay, so no mitigation is spelled when the caster dies. Well, I mean, obviously, right? Where would it? I guess maybe some people might assume it would go on to someone else, but okay. 12th turn, so I'm assuming that's 12 like unit turns, deals 50,000 fixed damage. 12 unit turns, how long would that take? I guess it really depends who's on the field, but with how fast paced the meta is right now, right? Especially units that take like two turns. I'm assuming that would count. Depending on who you fight, this could be really quick, right? Someone means anyone, I, I think, between both teams. We'll check that out later. Um, 50,000 fixed damage, which ignores damage sharing effects, guys. Unless the unit cannot, you know, that, this is going to one-shot most units in the game. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't have extinction. So, holy sacrifice, any units that revive, things like that. Um, we'll go past that. But this is very cool. I like this ability a lot. Um... Being able to last 12 turns, though, he's not an like a aggressive mage, right? Considering he has effectiveness in ER. Let's go ahead and check the animation though one more time real quick. Um, and I want to see what they're attacking, what damage. So it went on to Abyssal Euphine, right? And then it procced. I'm assuming there was a little editing there. Okay, 49,000. Overlord of Death. Increases damage suffered from light element enemies by 30%. Increases damage suffered from light elemental enemies. Wow. Okay, so he actually takes more damage from Light Elemental? Like, he's going to suffer even more damage, more than the bonus? Is that how I'm reading that correct, guys? Let me know in the comments. When allies attacked, has a 25%, uh, 35 to activate Mana Barrier once per three turns. Uh, grants a barrier to all allies for two turns, and the caster adopts a counterattacking stance for two turns. I like that a lot. Barrier strength increases proportional to the caster's max health. Okay. Barrier, if anyone gets hit, right... Um, he adopts a counterattack stance as well because this is whenever an ally is attacked and the barrier has HP scaling. All right, let me see this animation. How is this utilized in the demo? 
Looks like it's going to get proc'd from a uh, Ocean Breeze Lulica truck. There we go. There's a little animation. He raises his... Uh, I like those little effects that come out. And then we have the counterattack stance plus barrier for the team. Very cool. Skill 1. Lightning of lightning of Judgment attacks all these with lightning. Wait, this is AoE? With a 25% chance to stun for one turn. Very Dizzy-like from the very first collab. And then we can Soul Burn that for an extra turn. Damage dealt increase. It doesn't have HP scaling, though. And depending on how we build Ainz, right? With his skill 3 being mostly like a one-shot... I think we just want to stack a crap ton of HP and effect resist. Make sure he just lives. Because uh, it said, his, remember, his skill 3 will uh, be eliminated if he dies. So we want to build him super tanky for the fatter barriers. Just have him on the counterattack stance in case if they, anyone even looks at him, he's a chance to like stun everybody. And being a mage, we can even have other artifacts on top of that too, right guys? I'm already cooking. And then we can have extra turn. Very, very cool effects. I'm assuming the best build will be no damage, but of course, we'll wait till he's out. To see this but let's check the animation real fast an aoe 25 percent chance to stun there we go we got a stun there on the rol all right let's see the artifact what do we got staff of vines increase effectiveness by 10 percent effectors is by 20 percent max 20 and 40 the caster's effect resist decreases by four percent with each attack suffered down to 20 percent okay similar to um what is it the uh i think it's proof of valor right anytime you get hit or is it bastion Oh, one of the two. Like, uh, it lowers the amount that you start with anytime you take a hit. But overall, this gives a lot of stats, and I think we want both, right? We want some effectiveness and some effect resist. Probably a lot of effect resist so we can dodge um, things like defense break, uh, stun, silences, whatever that might be. And then just enough effectiveness to cover or one-shot units that might build a little bit of effect resist on top of that too, right? And his imprint and imprint concentration will help with that. And I think this artifact will help too. But I'm thinking about with a counterattack stance, you could think you could throw things on like Abyssal Crown, uh, maybe even like Fairy Tail for a Nightmare. Who knows? But I think in the beginning, like since we're going to be able to get this artifact for free as well, I'm assuming, right? Usually we can get the unit Triple S plus the artifact max limit broken. This is actually very nice, especially for people that are hurting on stats. So I don't mind that at all. Um, very nice. But I'm sh I'm assuming some since he's a mage, some people are going to come up with some very very cool combos. All right, uh, does. Oh, they didn't show us the lobby animation, huh? That This is a cool scene, though, of the three of them. All right, let's check the combat demo just very briefly. And then we're going to jump straight to the other two units because we have so much to talk about. But guys, let me know in the comments what you think so far of Ainz. I love this. He's a free ML5 um, that has such a cool kit. You have to build around him, right? But think of him, at least the way I'm interpreting it, as kind of like a mage Dark Corvus. That has a lot of stuns on top of that, too. So he's going to put the skill three that you cannot interrupt. You can't push back. And if he lands it, right, if he has the effect just, uh, effectiveness to land it, your unit is now on a clock. And a pretty fast clock. Because, look, we have super fast units like Shu that are going to accelerate really quickly. And um, that's eventually going to one-shot this Abyssal Euphine. Now, I believe in their combat demo, right, they showed us the Abyssal Euphine dying. Um, however, actually, I want to see this real fast. I'm assuming we built a lot of effect resist here. Resist? Yeah. Now, that might be kind of hard, though, on our walls with our plus 50 effectiveness. But look at that counter. Stun. Um, and then we get the Spez. I like that combo too. Get that big damage onto that ROL with Extinction. Now, there's no Extinction, like I was saying though, on the uh, the kill cooldown timer. So let's say, for example, this Euphina's on Holy Sacrifice. Uh, I'm assuming she just comes back, right? But either way, I love this kit, and I think this is one of my. I hope uh, I wasn't expecting the free unit to be this good, but man, Smilegate is hooking us up with a free ML5. Okay. We'll check this other stuff out later, but if you look, this is a very defensive and tanky team. We're just using Ainz here. Any potential stuns for the... We have like two win conditions here, but two supports. Support, Knight, and then Ainz is uh, one-shotting, and then Spez can one-shot too. All right, let's jump straight to the next Next unit. up, you know we got to check out Albedo. This is the one I'm most excited for, but honestly, after Ainz, she's going to have to be pretty amazing for me to be even more impressed. But without further ado, guys, let's check this out. So excited. <laughs> That face. Oh my god, she looks great. Earth Knight. Okay. A lot of people were predicting she was going to be a knight because in the lore, right, her job is to protect, especially to protect Ainz. The overseer of the guardians of the great tomb of Nazareth with pure white beauty. She looks amazing. All right, we'll take over from here. Earth Knight Sagittarius, effect resistant health, so another tanky unit. Uh, very, very slow. We can kind of already tell she's going to be more of a protector, I'm assuming. 
than an offensive oriented knight but who knows let's see let's go ahead and jump to the first skill what do we got here luckily um no crit chance imprint guys for those of you that don't want to potentially be tempted right or like speed imprint whatever uh the imprints are kind of just basic so far eins is going to be free and he only had like i think i think it was effectiveness and then albedo's is health rage of nazarick though let's see skill three uh, fiercely attacks the wicked enemy with a 75%, which is 25 after cooldown, 100%. Not after cooldown, after uh, skill enhancement to dispel all buffs. So, wow, both her and I believe uh, Ainz had full dispels. She's also going to make them unable to be buffed and decrease the fence. What the? So, full strip. One tart, right? One unit, full strip. Decrease the fence for two turns and unbuffable. Damage dealt increases proportional with HP scaling, and we can soul burn that to reduce this. Maybe we can use this as kind of like a a win condition, right? On a three turn cooldown, or um, yeah, three turn cooldown after. No, sorry, guys, two turn cooldown when you soul burn it because we have minus one here as well. All right, let's go and see the animation. We saw she kind of makes that angry face. Someone uh, insulted Lord Eines, and then she kind of dive bombs them. Full strip. Wow, that damage is not bad too, right? 6,200 HP scaling, un, uh, unbuffable, and defense break. S2, it's a passive. When an ally suffers a critical hit, decreases damage suffered by 15%. Uh, two, three, four, five. So 20% damage reduction. Just straight up, right? Straight up 20% crit damage reduction. Uh, similar to maybe like Little Queen Charlotte. I think this one's more though. It's been a while since I've seen... Uh, there's a few, what, artifacts, units that have this effect. Uh, I think, like, Archdemon Mercedes, but I think hers is only for herself. This is when an ally suffers a critical hit. Like I said, very lore-friendly. When an ally, except for the caster, suffers a critical hit, counterattacks with Let's Go, uh, Bicorn. Bicorn? I should know this, guys, but it's... I don't think this came up too often in the anime. <laughs> Let me know if I'm wrong and I just forgot. There's so many seasons already. But Bicorn can only be activated once every... It, it's Bicorn, right? It's like Unicorn. There's two horns, though. Can only be activated once every two turns. When more than one damage reduction effect is granted, there's only the strongest effect applied, right? That's normal. Okay, so we activate this whenever an ally... Uh, except for Albedo suffers a critical hit. And she counterattacks. And the damage is decreased by 20%. Uh, so let's go Bicorn attack. All enemies dispelling one buff before increasing speed of the caster for two turns. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health. All right. So let's see here. Whenever someone gets crit, she's going to counterattack, self-speed up, and then it's going to do some damage as well. That's HP scaling. Let's go ahead and see uh, the animation. I, I'm going to have to scroll ahead here real quickly, guys. I want to see this, though. So Gala Lilies attack the Crow. We proc the Albedo. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, my God. You know what? I think I do remember this. Um, damage is very light. But uh, we do get the speed up after that, right? Damage seemed not that impressive, though. Attacks the enemy with a Bardiche before increasing combat resistance of the caster by 15%. This is the S1. No need for words. Successful attack deals added additional damage to the caster's max health. Okay, so we're going to get like Nubarius or Rocket Punch kind of proc, I'm assuming. And damage dealt also has HP scaling with some combat readiness on top of that, right? An additional 20% total. Uh, okay, very cool. All HP scaling on all three of her damage abilities. Um, damage mitigation. Overall, though, guys, I'm not sure. I think Ainz is going to be honestly better than this, but I like these kind of units. I just don't think... I'm not sure if this is going to hold up in the current meta. It's very, very protective. And the damage so far doesn't seem too amazing. But let's go ahead and check out the artifact 3F. Uh, Albedo's main weapon, a giant bardiche. She punishes those who have been disrespectful to Ainz without hesitation. Uh, let's look at the max one. After tagging, has a 100% chance to deal additional damage to the target. Additional damage increases proportional to the max health. Is this our first one, guys? We have one Uberi's Tooth based off attack. We have Rocket Punch based off defense. And now... We have an HP scaling additional damage. And I think this is the very first one. And so get ready. This is one of the artifacts like Rocket Punch. I don't know if it's going to be as good as Rocket Punch. However, you're going to want to get this, okay? And this is going to what's... I like this. This is really going to add additional damage. And she has that extra proc too. Um, 
on one of her skills. I forget which one, but very nice. This will probably be the artifact you guys want to make sure you pick up. But just for future proof, even if you don't think Albedo's that good or you don't want to use her, it, other HP scaling units, you're going to want this already, okay? Don't make the mistake if you missed out on Rocket Punch or only got one copy. I'm going to definitely get more than one here, if not max this out, okay? Very cool. Let's go ahead and check out. Uh, they don't show the lobby animations in this one, huh? I guess we'll have to see that on our own when we pull them. Or I guess, is this it maybe? No, they'd be sitting in the lobby animation. Anyways, Ainz was sitting there. Uh, let's go ahead and check out what they're showing us in the combat demo real fast, and then we'll jump to Shaltir. I think Ainz is going to be better, which is crazy because he's the free unit, but I like these kind of knights. My personal preference, I like these. I just don't think if anyone's looking to chase the meta right now, I don't think a unit like this will be able to keep up, but I could be wrong, right? I was wrong on Karina, so maybe just HP scaling could be insane. Um, but yeah. So far, I think Ainz is actually going to be a little bit better. However, her artifact, right, is definitely very worth pulling. All these characters are worth pulling, guys. Remember, if these characters don't come, these characters may not come back. So you really want to make sure you get them. That's the additional damage, by the way, right? And I think, uh, I'm wondering if they're, I'm guessing they're stacking that with the artifact too. But they have a support comp here with Meteor Quare, Cilius, just solo damage, Albedo, huh? And I guess the Kraut ultimate as well. Dive Bomb, we get that Defense Break, full strip, and the Unbuffable. And then I'm assuming we're going to S3. Very lucky that this crowd lived with a 1,000 health. And we go ahead and finish off that unit. We do get a Counter-Attack here. Okay. It's interesting these kind of comps Malgate is showing us here. But yeah, I like these kind of teams I don't think work currently. Um with with how the meta has been shaping up especially lately but you know what i i like to play like this so i'll definitely be trying it out um and remember guys at any rank lower than you know legend ish anything can work so don't be afraid to try things out and if you guys want to cook some stuff up with albedo be my guest i definitely will be interested in jumping back into rta in the long after the longest time i haven't been really playing but here they go with the procs um uh, the damage not too impactful but with the crowd ultimate and then albedo setting it up Remember, too, we can Soul Burn to get her ultimate scaling even faster. Or, sorry, resetting even faster. Okay, let's go ahead and jump, guys, now straight into Shaltir. All right, last but certainly not least, I know a lot of you guys are actually most excited for this unit. Let's check out Shaltir. Shaltir. Very cool, a true vampire of cool beauty. All right, I like that epic music too. So we have a fire warrior. All right, so we have a knight, a warrior, and a mage. Kind of fast here at 119. Crit chance imprint. There it is, guys. So those of you that are gonna be uh, wanting shouts here, crit chance is always so good. So you might need multiple copies or at least one. Right? Remember, guys, the first imprint is the biggest value. Okay, but let's jump straight into her skills. Skill 2, they're leading off with a passive here. True Vampire. Damage suffered in one attack does not exceed 70% of max health. Um, with additional damage received limit increased there. At the start of the turn when the caster's health is 60% or more. Increase attack. Wow, self-attack up as long as your health is 60 or higher. And at the end of the turn, grants stealth for one turn. Wow. All right. So attack up. Depending on a modifier, stealth, and then we have, you know, that Tempest Surin kind of passive, Spirit Isolation, all the units that kind of have this Roy Mustang uh, passive where they can't deal, you know, you can't one-shot her, essentially. All right, very strong passive here for True Vampire. Are they going to have a skill preview for this? Let's go ahead and check it out. What are they going to show us here? Probably just the attack, the, the, the attack buff proccing. Yeah, attack up, and then the stealth is here. Her idle animation, by the way, guys, looked really nice. So skill three active, the purifying javelin. Um, dispels all buffs from the enemy and attacks with a gigantic javelin of white silver. Increases the chance by 100%. Wow, 100% chance when using this skill. Ignores effect resist of any targets with attack lower than the caster's attack. And she has attack up too. So ignore ER, hit chance, dispel all buffs. So all three units dispel all buffs, my god. And then um, a gigantic javelin. Three turn cooldown. Let's see the. Uh, I want to see the damage on this, and I want to see the animation one more time. She did. Here's the idle animation, by the way, or uh, not idle, but you know her turn. I guess that is idle animation. 
Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and see. She gets on the full body armor. Strikes at that Aiden with 100% hit chance. And was that 25k to the dome? My goodness, with that attack up, right? Okay, very cool. Or is that? Yeah, 25.5k damage. All right, summon household. This skill one summons different familiars to attack the enemy, inflicting injuries. Wow, she's going to have injury? The severity of injuries increases proportional to damage dealt. Injuries decrease max health. Yeah, we are. Okay, we know what injury does 10%. Increase damage dealt. Inc injuries decrease max health target by up to 20, so we can soul burn that to get a greater effect on the injury. And let's go ahead and check the animation here. So, skill 3, 100% hit chance. Ignore ER if we have higher attack. Skill 1 has uh, skill one has injuries. So, kind of a versatile unit. Thir How much damage did that do? She was defense broken though, right? Defense broken that did 32,000 damage. <laughs> nice. And I think I saw, I want to see the, the little dog pop out. Yeah, like a spirit, a familiar wolf or something pops out and kills R while there. My god. All right. And uh, sorry, I want to look one more time. Okay, she's using her own artifact. Let's see what that was. Something Lance. The Pipette Lance. A Divine Class Lance, which serves as Shaltir's main weapon. When attacking with a single attack, it increases damage dealt. Let's look at this one by 20%. So single attack, 20% damage, and absorbs 15% damage as health. And this will be proccing off the skill one and the skill three. So we'll get a little bit of health absorb, kind of like life steal, which actually works very nicely, guys, with, um, you know, the passes where you can't go one shot. Look at units like Tempest Surin when you build life steal on her. Look at units like Spirit Isolene with the health absorption too. Anytime you can get above that, you know, one shot threshold, which you can easily do when their health is low and you have that health absorb. I think this works really nicely. So. This artifact seems very good as well. Overall, I think her kit is better than Albedo's. Albedo, I think, has the worst overall kit. And it's not bad. It's just more of a very knight-focused defensive one, which I don't think the meta is really suited for. Whereas, I think Shaltir, you can really come up with some cool stuff with her. Uh, how useful she'll be, we'll find out. I think mostly we're going to want to bring her into things like, you know, they showed the Savior Aiden there. However, with the injuries... Plus, just, you know, she's kind of sticky. She can't be one shot. Has stealth, has attack up. I really like, uh, I think a lot of people are going to use this unit in a lot of different areas. Um, so very, very cool from Smilegate, man. Let's go and check out the combat demo. See what they want to bring her. So we're with a, this is the most offensive team they've shown us so far. And even then, not that offensive. But we do have a fast here. Conquer Lily set up the Vigor buff for our squad. Uh, that's going to activate. Sorry, not activate, but give us all some extra damage little bit of uh, defensive stats, but here we go. Ocean Breeze Luluka is going to proc. I want to see what this Shaltir is going to do. I'm assuming this is the same footage that one shots the Aiden. Was there an Aiden on the other team? Yep. Okay. Um, and wait, wait. Did we just miss with the Ocean Breeze Luluka? Is that what happened here? Yeah. So miss on the Ocean Breeze Luluka because it's Earth versus Fire. 50% chance. And then we have the Pipette or her ultimate. She stabs her, 25k, 100% hit chance. There was no RNG there. We strike an S3, even though we have the mischance buff here. And we hit the Aiden, which is nice. So that's actually where we get the defense break, because we saw the S1, guys. And the S1 is actually going to do some big damage. Let's go and just go all the way back to Shaltir's turn here. We didn't proc her there with a the dual attack, but she's coming up after this Ocean Breeze Luluka turn. Sorry, after the candy turn now. Please no salvo. Attack up with the Vigor buff. We soul burn. Is it the same footage? 32k. Yep. All right. Wow. All righty, guys. Well, uh, while this combat footage plays, I don't want to think too hard on the three units until we get closer to the release dates. I'm going to pull all three. I implore you guys. I encourage you guys to not spend any Sky Stones on anything. Once again, I think Epic 7 is a game where collaborations may not come back the next year. So if you miss out on this run... There's a good chance you may not get these ever again in the future. And I don't know if Smilegate's going to make clones of them or what in original Epic 7 characters. They haven't done that for Espa yet. So make sure you pick up one copy of each. Remember, you only need to get Albedo and Shaltir and one copy of their artifact, if not more, if you plan to use more than one, okay? But yeah, remember, maybe having two of each is the safe, and then you can just bottle the rest later down the line. But don't combine them. Make sure you pull one of everything. And uh, we have our first free dark ML5. I, I think I'm actually most excited for Ainz here. And I thought I was going to be most excited for Albedo, and I still am. I'm still going to plan a user. 
Um, but I think kit wise, I'm most excited for Ainz. Let me know what you guys are most excited for. And don't forget, Shaltier has Crit Chance imprint. So those of you that really like her, get those bookmarks ready. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is going to be a long video, but I hope you enjoyed. I'm very hyped for the 18th, I believe, is when it's coming out. And I will catch you guys then. Peace out, everybody.